Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here, and in this video, we're going to look at how to add an atmosphere to a planet using Redshift. Now, I've covered this in a previous tutorial in the standard renderer in Cinema 4D. There we use something called the Lumus shader. Unfortunately, Redshift doesn't have anything like this, but I've spent a lot of time in the last few months working with Cinema 4D volumes in Redshift, and that's opened up a couple of doors for me into understanding how we might set this up. It's not a perfect solution for every situation, but it will help in a lot of cases. So let's look at that. Now that you've seen what the end result is going to look like, I'm going to delete a whole bunch of stuff so that we can rebuild it from nothing. Get rid of the volume builder that's there. We're going to get rid of our dome light. And we're left with a star field in the background, a null containing a redshift area light that's creating the light on this planet. And then finally, a sphere that is the planet. So first thing we need to do is to create a sphere for the atmosphere. So I'm going to control click and just drag it. And then I'm going to delete this material right here. And I'm going to make this sphere, the second sphere, the copy, 103 centimeters. So it's larger than the original sphere because we want the atmosphere on the outside of the planet. The next thing we're going to do is create a volume builder. And we're going to drop our sphere right into the volume builder and uh, we get this low resolution sort of sphere. We're gonna come and fix that in a little bit. Right now we can't even see it. So the next thing we're going to do is to add in a volume material so that we can make it visible. I'll choose Redshift, Materials, Materials, and Volume. And then I'm going to add this volume material to our volume builder. And we won't see anything at first. Volume materials require you to assign certain properties to different channels. So let's go into the material right here. And for RS volume, I'm just going to double click in there. And you'll see right here, RS volume will go in there. And for the scatter channel, we're going to need to choose something. Now, you're not going to be able to see some of these options off the side of my screen. Sorry about that. But we're going to go for the bottom one called Volume Builder. If you've worked with Pyro, then you know that there's all these different properties here. But this last one, Volume Builder, is appropriate for here. So it's Volume Builders and then Volume Builder. And then we'll choose it and it will apply. And right now, what we're seeing is kind of this giant sort of like square. I'm going to pull back so you can see we're, we're seeing a giant space square. Um, and what I want to do is change a setting. We have to come back to our volume builder. This is happening because we have the wrong setting for what kind of volume it is. So we're going to change it from signed distance field. We're going to change it to fog. And now we've got a sphere that looks kind of a mess, but we're going to fix that too. So this is the result of it being a low resolution volume. So what we need to do is go over to where it says voxel size and we need to lower this down. I want to be clear, the lower you set this, the longer it's going to take to generate the image and also just kind of calculate everything. So keep it as high as you can while looking good. If I go to one, you know, I can see we're getting better, but we're not 100% here. What I'm going to do before I just try to make any other changes, I'm going to do two things. The first is I'm going to select my sphere and I'm going to choose a perfect primitive. This is something that you may notice in Cinema 4D and other places too. It helps Cinema 4D render a better version for the final than what you're actually seeing. So perfect primitive, it looks pretty good. It's not ideal, but it's good enough. Maybe we want to even lower the voxel size to 0.5. I'm not sure we're going to get much out of it, but uh, you can give that a shot. The other thing is we kind of want to smooth some of this stuff out. So there's a fog smooth button right here. And if I choose that, it will smooth out some of the kinks. It again, is not perfect, but I think it's good enough for now. Okay, now we need to make some changes to the material itself. So let's go back to the volume material, and we're going to have to look at some of what we've got set up here. Now, we've got it set to volume builder for the channel, um, but we have to work with the scatter coefficient as well as the absorption coefficient. These two things have an interplay of light transmission and how much it sort of weighs in terms of the thickness of it and whatnot. So we're gonna play around a little bit and see what we can get to. I'm going to lower the scatter coefficient so that we're scattering the light a little bit differently. Let's try sending it to 0.5. Let's see what that looks like. It's definitely not quite where I want it to be. Maybe even lower this to 0.1. And I can see what would be the atmosphere spreading out of the planet looking the way I want it to, but we still can't see the planet underneath there, and we should really be able to start seeing that. So let's come down to our absorption and see if we can lower that down a bit. When I set it to the same value of 0.1, and I'm also just going to refresh this. Sometimes I find that doing that helps things. Yeah, so there it is. Our texture is under there, and we can see this thing. Obviously, this atmosphere is plain white. We probably want to go with something a little bit better. Uh, we can change the color. Let me come back up here to tint and go with something bluish, you know, bring this up like that. 
and I think that's looking pretty good. So now let's see how it's all looking. Let me change my view here and we'll go to my top view just so that I can see what's going on here. And I can see I have a, an area light that's inside of a null. So if I rotate this null, check that out. As the light rotates around the planet, we can see the atmosphere lighting up. That's pretty cool. But now we've created a little bit of a problem for ourselves because you know, if you wanna add any other lights to your scene, the atmosphere is going to react to those lights. And you might be thinking, oh, so I can maybe set a light to exclude certain objects in the scene. Well, let's take a look if that works here. So I'm gonna add in a dome light. And when I do that, you can see that even the parts that are not being lit up by our area light are visible, which makes sense because the light is hitting the sphere. Let me turn off the light from the background so we don't see it. And what do we do? Even if I set this dome light down to maybe I want to have a little bit of a fill, I maybe set it to 0.2 so we can just see a little bit of it. I still don't want the atmosphere to be lit up. So like I said before, maybe you're thinking go into the exclusion settings for the light and tell it to ignore the atmosphere. But if I go into the light and you go into the project settings, and I should just be able to grab hold of the volume builder, drop that in or the sphere and drop that in. But the exclusion settings aren't working with this. So what we need to do is to go over to the dome light and the detail section, scroll down to where you see the volume attribute. And this decides how much of the light is contributing to the volume's visibility. So we're gonna set this down to zero. And now we get the atmosphere on the outside. We get the light hitting the planet and giving us a little bit of fill, but we get no atmosphere. And I think this looks okay from far away, but let's take a closer look. When I pull up really close, I can see that the space between the planet and the atmosphere is leaving this very thick area, and I don't love that for a close-up. So let's see if there's any changes we can make to fix this. They may not be great for a far away shot, but we'll try a couple of things here. So with my volume sphere selected right here, I'm gonna set the radius from 103 down to 101. And we can see that the atmosphere has gotten thinner, but it's also kind of disappeared because the volume material, the fog is actually now kind of inside the planet a little bit. We need to thicken things up a little bit. So let me go into the volume material here and we'll go over to where it says scatter coefficient. We can try to raise this to 0.2, which definitely brings some of it back. And I also think that if I pull this gradient down a little bit, we can thicken up the atmosphere that way as well. And that's looking pretty good. Let me pull back a little bit here. I think that's okay. Another thing that we can do to help make this look more interesting, if not maybe more realistic, is to work with the color a little differently. So I wanna make the atmosphere change colors from when it first starts over here to when it gets to the darker area. I've seen that in some space photography and I think it looks pretty cool. So let's do this. Let's grab the blue from our tint color, but then let's set our tint to white. And then let's add in another color right here. I'll double click and I'm going to choose a purple, maybe closer to blue, something like that. And I'll click OK, and that's gonna make things look terrible. So I'm just gonna drag this down, get this down to right, right to the end there, just like that. And now we've got like an atmosphere that sort of changes over time from this bright blue into like a deeper blue and then into black. And if I bring this down, yeah, I think it's looking okay. There's definitely some low resolution voxel stuff happening over here that I don't love. And maybe we can bring this back to 0.1. And it lowers the thickness of the atmosphere and hides the imperfection a little bit better. And you could go, like I said, back to the voxel. We can go back to the volume builder voxel settings right here. And we can set the voxel size to 0.25. But I'm going to hold my breath while I do this. And that took a moment, but uh, it's looking better. And you know, this is gonna be a give and take and depending on the angle and how close you are to the planet and all of that, but we can rotate around and we can see that we are getting updates pretty quickly now. So that's pretty good. Anyway, as always, I hope that this helps you in your work. Once again, I'm Alan Rabinowitz. I'll see you soon.